In this video, we're looking at how to quantitatively add electric field contributions coming from more than one source to obtain the total electric field at a point in space. Then in a follow-up example, we're going to look at graphing the electric field lines for a dipole field based on qualitative arguments about the electric fields from each source adding together. So before we begin, we need something called the superposition principle. And all the superposition principle says is that electric fields and electric forces add vectorially. So when you have more than one source, you just compute the vector contribution due to each of the sources and then add those contributions vectorially. So in our first example, we have two point charges, plus one microcoulomb, minus one microcoulomb, separated by a meter. And we're trying to compute the electric field vector at this point A and this point B that's coming up vertically by a half meter off of that midpoint. So let's get A done first. So there are two contributions to the total electric field at point A, and one of them is the field pointing away from the positive charge. So I'm going to call that EA plus. And then the other one is the field pointing toward the negative charge, and I'll call that EA minus. Both of these point purely horizontally in the same direction. So when I add the two vectors, the magnitudes are just going to add. And let's go ahead and find the magnitude of EA plus. The electric field at some distance from a point charge is given by KQ over R squared. K is the Coulomb's law constant. That's 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. My charge Q is 1 micro coulomb, which is 10 to the negative 6th coulombs. The distance from that source charge is half a meter. And I'm probably not going to keep the units on the rest of these, but I wanted to do it once just to illustrate how it works out. And so I have meters squared up here, canceling meters squared in the denominator. One factor of coulombs cancels, and I'm left with newtons per coulomb as my familiar unit of electric field. When I do this, I get 3.60 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. All right, what about Ea minus? That's going to be kq over r squared. But everything is the same there except for the minus sign that you would have on the q. And that just means the electric field is pointing toward that negative charge. So I know I've got exactly the same magnitude, the same k, the same q, the same r by symmetry. And I get another 3.0 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. All right, so then the magnitude of the electric field at point A is just going to be the sum of these two magnitudes because these two vectors point in exactly the same direction. So EA is going to be 7.20 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb pointing to the right. And I tried to show that as a vector twice as long as the contribution vectors that I originally drew. All right, let's look at point B. Things get a lot more complicated at point B. Now, I still have a high degree of symmetry, so that's nice. But the distance from my point charges requires a little bit of trigonometry. So there's the distance R. And that's the hypotenuse of a right triangle whose legs are both 0.5. So I'm going to do that as a side calculation over here. R is the square root of 0.5 squared plus another 0.5 squared. And when I crunch those numbers, I get 0 0.707 meters. There's another complication. The electric field contribution from my positive charge points this way. I'll call that EB plus. And it's pointing it at some angle. I'm going to go ahead and draw a horizontal here as a reference. And I know that when I do vector addition, I have to break the vectors into components. That's why I'm labeling this. Well, this is 45 degrees, which means this must be 45 degrees as well. Then I look at EB, and I know this is going to be the same magnitude, so same length of the vector, because it's the same magnitude of charge and the same distance. And again, if I look at angles here, it's going to be 45 degrees. Maybe you just see that. Or I could say, well, that's a 45 degree angle right there because it's one of the angles in a right triangle that has legs that are equal. 
but this is 90 degrees, which means the leftover angle here is also 45 degrees. And then I start looking at components. Well, my vertical components, first off, are going to have exactly the same magnitude because the hypotenuse of each of these is the same. The two electric field contributions have the same magnitude and the angles are the same. And so this I could call EB plus Y, certain to be a really complicated subscript, and EB minus Y. And I can see they have the same magnitude in opposite directions, so those are going to cancel out. I get no Y component to my final vector. I have only the horizontal components adding together, so that's nice. And because the angles are the same and the magnitudes are the same, those two horizontal components are the same. And all I have to do is find one and then double the result. So when I get into the math, I have EB plus magnitude is equal to KQ over R squared. And that's 8.99 times 10 to the ninth times the size of the charge, 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, divided by distance from the source charge squared. So that's 0 0.707 squared. And when I run the numbers, I get 1.80 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. Now remember, that's the magnitude of the electric field contribution from that plus charge. But in the end, I need the parallel component of that. So I'm going to need an EB plus parallel, which is given by EB plus times the cosine of theta. So 1.80 times 10 to the fourth cosine 45 degrees, which gives me 1.27 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. All that's left to do now is double that because I have two of those equal horizontal components adding to each other, and I end up with EB. So the magnitude of EB is going to be twice that previous result. I kept some extra digits in my calculator, so it comes out to 2.55 times 10 to the fourth newtons per coulomb. And I tried to draw that vector roughly twice as long as this, those two components that I added to get it. In the next example, we're looking at the same dipole distribution. So there's one positive charge and one negative charge. And we're asked to qualitatively sketch the electric field lines in all the space surrounding the charges. So the way I would start this it's by arguing that if I'm very close to the plus charge or very close to the minus charge, those points are so much closer to one of the charges that its field contribution is going to absolutely dominate the sum there. In other words, when I'm right next to the plus charge, it just looks like the field of an isolated plus charge. Same for the minus charge. So here's what that looks like. Okay, the next part of the argument is to say that along this midline, this dashed vertical line, I have a symmetry situation that makes it so the electric field always points exactly horizontally. And we saw a quantitative illustration of that in the last example. So I know that as these field lines cross the midline, they're going to be horizontal. In other words, the electric field vector is horizontal there. So here's what that looks like. So then the last phase of this sketch is to connect these field vectors at these individual points with a continuous field line. And that field line will tell you the direction of the electric field vectors at every point along the line. So here's what that looks like. Now the last thing I want to do here is to just clarify with some arbitrary point that this is plausible, that this is really giving us the correct direction of field at every point. So let's look at this point right here. At this point, I'm closer to the negative charge than I am to the positive charge. So it means that I would have a contribution to my electric field pointing at the negative charge directly that's rather large. And then I would have a contribution to the field pointing away from the positive charge, but it's quite a bit smaller. If I then vector add these things, so I'm picking up the short one and tacking it onto the head of the long one, that gives me a vector sum pointing from the tail of the first to the head of the second. And I can see that that pretty much lines up parallel with the electric field line that I've drawn there. So I'm just trying to make an argument for plausibility here. I'm just going to do one more of these to make it clear how it works. I'm going to look at that point. And at that point, I would have a contribution pointing directly away from the positive charge and rather large. 
and I would have a contribution pointing directly at the negative charge, but rather small. I'm going to pick up that second vector and tack it on to the head of the first vector, something like this. And then when I look at the vector sum, it goes from the tail of the first to the head of the second. And I can see it's pretty much parallel to the electric field line that I had drawn there. So this is a really famous field called a dipole field that you get when you have a positive and negative charge with equal magnitudes. And this is actually the field that you would use to describe uh, like a polarized molecule, for example. So it pops up in a lot of applications. If you find the physics content on Zach's lab helpful, click on the Zach's lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.